Hello and welcome back to another Tasty Blender 2.83 tutorial with your host, a guy who hides his hairline with a cap. We are continuing one of my previous tutorials, which was a mechanical joint rig. We're actually going to texture that mechanical joint. We'll use a bit of a different approach. So basically we will be working mostly with Blender. However, we'll also take a look at Quixel, Quixel Mixer, which is a texturing software that I found recently. I think it's really useful. It's very simple to use. And I'll show you how to prepare your stuff in Blender so you can then apply it in Mixer. After that, we're going to export those textures and we're going to take them back into Blender and texture our rig. So let's get into it. So this is where we've left off last time. Basically, we made the top, the bottom joint and the cover. Now today we will do the texturing for these guys and we won't do it like we usually do in Blender. We'll actually use Quixel's mixer. So before we go to Quixel, we just have to do a couple of things to our objects so they accept the textures a bit better. Remove the cover and I'll also remove the bottom sphere for now. So basically we can see what's happening with the top. I'm going to select the top sphere and just move the side of the screen and set it to UV editor. I'm gonna go into edit mode and I'll choose the edge select mode now for Mixer or rather for Quixel, there's a particular way to go about UV maps. So if we want to unwrap this model and not have any stretching in Quixel, we have to do it a very particular way. We're just going to loop select or choose the loops on this side and we'll choose the direct mirror on the other side by holding Alt Shift and then click selecting the loop. We'll take away the two loops at the top and now you can also press Z to go into wireframe and we'll choose the loop that's on the bottom of the cylinder. So our selection should look like this. Press Ctrl E, mark the seam and then press A twice, U and unwrap and you should get something like this. In our next screen we can just click on the faces, select the top cylinder, press Ctrl P. So it's going to use maximum amount of space possible in our UV map, R, rotate it, put it inside the texture. You can also scale it down just slightly so it fits inside. Now we're gonna go under File, Export, Wavefront, OBJ, make a folder and save the OBJ there. I'm just gonna name it Top. Tick the selection only and make sure that it, in geometry you have apply modifiers and include UVs. Export this OBJ and we can move to Quixel. In Quixel, we can go under Setup, and under Type, we can choose Custom Mesh instead of Plane. Just choose the object that you have exported, and it's going to put it into Quixel. Now, in order to texture this, we can go under our local library. We can choose the Smart Materials. We can now start and choose a material that we like. The thing about Smart Materials is that they actually respond to your mesh. So they're going to give the mesh a bit of this used or scratched effect that usually takes a while to set up in Blender. For example, let's just, just choose a material. In my case, I'm just going to go with the oxidized galvanized metal, for example. So this is going to be my texture. Click twice on it and it's going to import it directly onto your object. If you click under layers and click the oxidized galvanized metal, you can see that you can toggle the visibility and control some of the parameters of your object. And this is very intuitive. It's very simple. You can control the opacity, so how strong you would like the effect to be. But in any case, this is going to be completely enough for us. You can also choose the normals, so you have also a normal map that you can later export. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we can do without our normal map. In order to export this, just go under export, rename it. I'm just going to rename it to top, create the subfolder, open folder after export. And you also have these options, which are all of the maps that you can export. So it's Albedo. We won't be needing the diffuse, so you can just tick off that one. Specular, roughness, normal, displacement, ambient occlusion, and metalness. We definitely need metalness. After you've done everything, just export these seven maps. And this is going to basically compile a typical PBR texture type of folder, like that, okay? Let's go back to Blender. I'm gonna change a 
bit my structure. So I'm just going to drop down the screen, change it to shader editor, press N so I don't have that menu on the side. Go under the materials and add a new material. Now, if you don't want to waste too much time, I advise you to go under edit preferences and find node wrangler under your add-ons. It's extremely useful because it's going to make your principled BSDF workflow much faster. Shift Control T, find the folder in which you've saved your textures, press A to select all of them and also untick relative path and then just click on principled texture setup. This is going to put all of your textures in order with everything that you need. And that's essentially it. So basically now we can repeat the same step on the bottom sphere. So I'm just going to select the bottom sphere, go under my modifiers. I'm going to move the solidify to be on top like so, and I'm going to apply it. And then I'm going to unwrap this model as well. So I'm just going to select two loops like we did before. So we have these two selected. Deselect these two and also go into wireframe by pressing Z and deselect the ones that are inside. You can press C and with the middle mouse, just scrub over them. While you're in wireframe, you can loop select the outer bottom of the cylinder and the inner bottom of the cylinder. So you have a selection that looks like that. Control E, mark seams. So you have your seams marked. A twice, you unwrap and you have your model unwrapped. We can press C and then click on our faces over here, control P, then rotate them. And let's just scale them down so they can fit inside and they are not interloping on the other spheres. Having selected our bottom, go into file, export, wavefront OBJ, and now we can rename it to bottom. Keep selection only, don't forget about that, and include UVs and apply modifiers. Export your OBJ, and now we can return to Mixer, and in our setup, we can just go under our folder and we can load the bottom. And it's going to apply the same texture it did to our bottom. And you can see it's working completely fine. Export again, just don't forget to rename to bottom. Export your seven maps. And we can return to Blender and basically do the same thing as before. Just add a new material, select your principal BSDF, shift control T, then choose the bottom map, select all principal textures set up. And when we go into viewport shading, you can see that everything is applied. Last thing we need to do is our cover. So our cover just gonna go to the beginning. So we have the full cover open, go into edit mode, just gonna select the two sides, make sure that they are absolutely mirrored, control E, mark seam, and then select everything and UV unwrap again. File, export, wavefront OBJ, rename it to cover in this case. I'm gonna export it again, move to mixer again and just reload this model. Now, when we choose this one, it's also going to apply the map to our model over here, which isn't necessarily something that we want. We don't want it to be metal. We want something else so we can just Hover over Oxidize Galvanize Metal, right click and delete the layer. Let's go to our local library again and let's scrub our options here. For example, trying to find something that will work for us. For example, this dirty yellow plastic isn't half bad. So I'm just gonna, I think I'm just gonna click on it. And this is going to apply the texture to my ball. These black spots are kind of bothering me so we can just take them away or we can go under old dust and then just move the opacity so it's not as strong. Now let's export this by renaming it to cover. In our case we won't be needing the metalness, maybe we can keep the displacement but everything else it's completely fine. Just untick the metalness. Export again the maps and when we return to Blender we're just gonna add a new material again. This is going to be our cover material. Choose the principal BSDF, shift control T, and then find the cover material. And when we select all of them and add them to our model, you can see that it's applied perfectly. Now let's close these just for a second. So we have something like that. So before we see our cloth in action and our joint in action, I would just like to select the 
ball on top. And I would like to make just a bit of a correction. So I'm going to take away the cloth for now, for just a second. I'm going to move the end of the animation to 100 frames. So I'll go to frame 50, press 1 on the numpad. And now I'm going to move to frame 100. So it's G, Z, and then just move the ball down. I'm going to return to the start, open my cover again, select it. And now I just want to bake my cloth simulation so I can see how it's behaving. Set the end to 100 frames because we don't need more. And I'm just going to bake it. After my model's been baked, I'm just going to press Alt-A and start my animation. So I can just see how my material is responding to the bending of my cloth. And also how my cloth is actually behaving when it's put to its limit, like extreme stretching. Let's go to frame 95. If I want to see this in all of its beautiful <laughs> realistic glory, I can go under World, the color, I can change to an environment texture. And if you press Open, just search for a HDRI of your choice and then add it into the scene. Let's go under our render properties. Now, right now we're in EV. So if I press Shift Z, it's still not set up. But if I move to Cycles, it's going to be a bit better. I'm going to just change to GPU compute so it computes a bit faster like that. And it's actually pretty good. It's actually not <laughs> holding badly. We can change the, the lighting and the orientation of the lighting a bit, but for, for what it is, I think it's done a beautiful job. You can see the nice displacements, you can see the nice roughness, a very rough and tough type of joint. So yeah, that's going to be it for today. Uh, we've actually texturized our mechanical joint. We texturize our cover. We've learned a bit about Pixel. So hopefully this will help you out with uh, some of your texturing stuff. If you'd like to see me work more on this mechanical joint stuff, uh, let me know down in the comments. I always appreciate those. I always read them and take your guys' feedback very seriously. In any case, this is going to be it. So see you in the next one. Bye.